an amendment is an example of the originalist constitution framers intent enshrined like there's some sort of God. It's an amendment, meaning they made a boo-boo and fixed it. Your right to keep and bear arms isn't being infringed by taking all the guns away in the United States because firearms aren't the only kind of arms. Hi, I'm a liberal. Now we're at the 30-second mark. Start typing without listening because that's the reactionary behavior and we know you have to get it out of your system because you've already been pre-programmed, conditioned, to do whatever you're doing. When I say that Every American should be able to buy and own or make a 12-gauge handgun without any restrictions, without any background check, without anybody uh, having record of it. Oh, now what are you going to do? You, you can go get one. I, I know where you can get one uh, off the internet. It shows up in the mail. And it takes 12-gauge shotgun shells. It's not... It's not in any way, shape, or form a muzzle loader or anything like that that would actually be able to handle higher pressure if it was built correctly, but we won't go there. That's an engineering video I've already done. It's called a flare gun. It's made out of plastic. But it is still a 12-gauge handgun. And are you allowed to make one in metal? Yes. Are you allowed to own one? Yes. You just have to, before you have any possession of any product or Put it on your wish list because the ATF is not telling the truth anymore. Gee, what a surprise. Um, you contact them and say, I am of sound mind and body. I'm normal. I have no criminal record. Here's my cashier's check or money order. They take money orders. I want you to acknowledge that I have the right to keep and bear arms and I have the right to make a 12-gauge handgun a real one, not just a muzzle loader. And I don't have possession of anything like a firearm, not even a flare gun. The ATF recently made a ruling that being in possession of a chunk of bar stock can deliberately be misinterpreted as it already being a firearm. And you didn't get a permit yet. You have to start from a dead, from, from a, from flat footed, dead start. You can't have any materials or equipment because they'll declare the drill and drill bits to be part of the process of making a firearm. They will declare any precursor component or tool. They, they added that in as, yeah, you have a drill bit, right? Yeah, that's, that's, now, that's now a machine gun, if we want to say so. Even though that's obviously a misinterpretation and would never fly in court, that is the legal foot in the door the ATF has gone ahead and done. Now, that last part I told you about, is only partially untrue because they redacted a piece of paperwork by redacting the file on the internet. They said the quiet part out loud. So now that I've got a bunch of people screaming, and obviously that's going to jack up the ranking of the video because YouTube isn't literally lowering the view count while I'm watching the graph <clears throat> on one of my videos a couple of months ago. I want to point out something. If anybody's curious, the videos on my channels that get the most views are about the most mysterious song on the internet or the back rooms. I'm not joking. Pop culture subjects that are interesting and fun, they have no problem with letting me see the view count. And just like the ATF lying constantly about everything, YouTube actually had a memo where they stated that they were just simply not letting you know how many people viewed your videos. They're correcting it because they don't want to encourage people. Read, they erase some of the view count because it's just a number that they report to you and and, and you're not allowed to, they're trying to depress you. I have videos that have more comments and more downvotes because the downvotes aren't visible than the view count. Now, the downvotes can be explained. So can the comments. A person could have done what I say, which is do not rate, comment, or subscribe to, you know, based on the video. Pause it. Don't give me the page view. Read the data below it. And then go ahead and watch it if you want to. <clears throat> Nobody follows my instructions, so that's bupkis. YouTube is changing the view count. So we're now at the point where every metric we use 
is based on them wanting to make sure, number one, we, we don't know what's going on. Number two, if you're a video uploader like me, that you technically don't qualify for uh, monetization because they say you don't have the view count because they keep subtracting from it. Now, is that copium on my part, trying to say that I'm not getting views because big bad corporation doing it? Yeah, but but I caught them. I actually sat there and looked at, I, I don't look at the metrics page, but I'm like, okay, let's see what happens. Oh, one of my videos is trending. Now the view count's half what it was. But that was a view count from an hour ago of people who watched the whole damn video because it was so short. The view count wasn't amazingly large, but it was there and then they made it go away. And then when I scrolled back, the graph went from here down and corrected the error. Well, those are bots. There was only 100 views on the video and it went down to 50. That's not 50 bots. They're not going to do that if that's really their concern. It's not an error because it's an hour old. No matter how weak or useless your channel is, YouTube is ridiculously obsessive about making sure that that information is recorded because they got sued a couple of times for fudging the numbers for people who could watch the view count like I did. That's how I got the idea. That was like four years ago. Apparently, they're continuing to do it. They just don't do it if you're worth money. They only do it if you're poor. Some are more equal than others. Now that I've massaged your brain with me blathering on and on about this, and comparing it to the ATF refusing, along with a bunch of other government agencies, not local government agencies of the police department, but the federal government, refusing to acknowledge the number of times per year ordinary citizens stop a criminal. It's actually, whatever number you read, it's triple. They divided by three. They just said, well, for error correction, they just literally divided it by three. That's an error. That's a statistical correction. That's their way of uh, weighting the results. Uh, no, you don't want people to know that having people, literally ordinary citizens that are sane and not as well trained as cops still stops crime a little bit more often than you want to admit to. It is not a big number. I don't advocate for everybody open or concealed carry. I don't. I also don't think that police are honest all the time either, and I also don't believe in them saying that the, the, the camera uh, uh, failed. That their body cams don't fail. They shut them off. I don't listen to people lie to me and do anything but say, you're lying. So let's get to this keep and bear arms idea. It doesn't say firearms. It is a correction to something that's, and it's an afterthought or a correction <clears throat> to something that the founding fathers did not see fit to put into the Constitution. It's not the most important damn thing to them. The founding fathers individually, and everybody says that, but they don't mention who. When you look up their actual writing, not the bullshit meme you saw on Facebook, didn't consider firearms that god dang important. Why? Because people were still doing cavalry charges with literal bow and arrow cannons and uh, swords and spears. That's why there's a mount on the front of a lot of guns for a bayonet, which is one of the few things that's still regulated. You can own a bayonet for a gun. It's just a big fucking pokey stick made of metal. It's just a knife, a big fucking, it's a short sword, whatever. But you can't have the ability to put it on a gun because making a gun into a short range weapon that's easily taken away from you is somehow forbidden. Lots well, of weapon of war. Shut the hell up. It's a sharp stick. It's just made out of metal. And by the way, if you've never done it, using a bayonet with the barrel of a gun is crap compared to using a spear. No, it is. Shut up. It is not useful as much. Just make a really long metal point or get a botkin tip on an arrow and do it right. It's a last-ditch effort. It was of limited value, except in trench fighting. But let's get on with this. The Founding Fathers debated whether or not American citizens should be armed, and... 
by ignoring certain parts, both sides get to have an argument. The liberals decided it was only for the military or for what we would now call the National Guard, the militia, the sanctioned regulars. You can watch a couple of movies, one of them with Mel Gibson in it, where they talk about if you signed up or agreed or were deputized or whatever, you were an irregular military, but you had to follow some rules. That's what we now call the National Guard. That's obviously not irregular. It's the National Guard. But if you were a citizen soldier, why would you be told you have a right to keep and bear arms? And unless you're an idiot, why would you assume the government wanted to force you to have the right to keep and bear any arms? And yeah, this is a dork stamp I got from bonking my head again. I'm really a klutz, okay? I'm seeing it on the video, so I figured I should point that out. But let's get to it. Why would the government guarantee a right when it's not a backhanded way to force you to do something? Ah, some of you are figuring it out because it's followed by the words about, about a discussion about regulated militias. Regulating militias by making them obey the government. Oh, now you're seeing, oh, oh, uh, I'm sorry, you can't have me in your military. I'm an ex, uh, I'm, a, I'm an ex-prisoner. I served at, at, a, at, a, at a prison colony. You can't make me join your military. You have a right to keep and bear arms according to the Constitution because the Second Amendment was passed. Uh, what do you mean? You're drafted and you don't have that excuse. Put him in the front. He's fodder. Waptech, that doesn't sound like something I can put on a bumper sticker and scream really loudly while I shake an AR-15. Yeah. Are you realizing that this just means that you can't use your lack of rights? When you lose the right to keep and bear firearms, that's actually what it says on the paperwork if you get a felony high enough that they decide to do that. You're not allowed to have firearms. It does not say arms, because then you couldn't own a butcher knife to cut steak. You, you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't defend yourself at all. Felons are allowed to have muzzle loaders because they're not considered firearms. They're considered antiquated, old style, not effective in a cavalry charge. You might have noticed originally a lot of people brought up, well, this is regulating whether or not it could be a firearm that would be used in war or not. And everyone's like, why? Because it kept you from refusing to serve. Oh, that doesn't sound like something I'd want to... Yeah, it's not the flex you thought it was. It doesn't say firearms, it says arms. Well, uh, well, uh, what? At the time the, the, the Second Amendment was drafted and written up, you didn't think they were referring to literally every form of weapon that could be used? And by mentioning the militia, don't you mean forced to serve drafted conscripts being compelled to fight even if they were prisoners yeah <clears throat> well you can't put him at the front of the line he's a prisoner he's not allowed to have a firearm says here he has the right to an arm his right was not taken away you can give him a bayonet he can still fight your right to defend yourself extended to being compelled to defend your country but no we don't discuss that Anybody remember when the draft was still in place? I do. I grew up during it. The draft was still legally allowed. This voluntary military we have now, voluntary military kind of rhymes, there's still a law that says you can be drafted. Many of you have to register for the draft. It's compulsory in the United States that you serve if you're an able-bodied human. By the way, if you didn't know about it at the time, that meant that they could conscript British citizens to fight. That was part of the reason. Uh, I can't fight. I don't have a right to fight on your side. Yes, you do. We've, we've extended your rights. Get in front. Here's your bayonet. Do you want a gun now? Yeah, okay. By the way, uh, the majority of kills may not have actually happened from firearms. You know that, right? So you can argue this point. I welcome it. I'm leaving the comment section wide open. But do you feel comfortable commenting like that under my video where I'm just going to tear it apart? Next video, maybe I'll look up all the data and see what they meant. Bye.